Welcome back to Wednesday morning here on Breakfast Television. Don Chube getting set in the live eye and very artistic to start things off. Don. Yeah, it's so interesting to sort of see the inspiration and a bit of the process of artists at the Eastside Culture Crawl. And again, we're sort of looking at a piece of art right now that's being featured. But Karen, I can't even believe that you're starting this with weaving. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing here. The base of the work is weaving and it starts out with linen threads. And the cracks on the pieces are formed by the spaces on the loom. So the wider the spaces, the wider the cracks, and the smaller the spaces, the smaller the cracks. That is fantastic. Come on up right now, because we got to find out a little bit about why you even started and how you even came to sort of create this kind of artwork. Um, I studied painting and sculpture in university, and I worked a lot with plaster and commercially made fabrics, and I found that it wasn't durable. So I switched to tile grout, and then I decided to learn how to weave my own cloth. So then how does it get from weaving to the sort of finished product? So here it starts out with the linen threads. The linen threads are sealed with acrylic paint to make it more durable. Then I place a layer of tile grout onto the weaving, and I crack it. And so the different cracks will kind of give it that almost like a, not quite a mosaic, but that sort of feeling, yes. right? Yes. And then is that what it looks like once you crack it? Yes. So some of the spaces will fall out, but the, some of the spaces are formed with a hammer and chisel, and the acrylic paint is absorbed in the tile grout because the tile grout is so porous. It is like amazing to me when you talk to different artists about how they sort of come up with things. I mean, did you, were you, did you always do art as a child? Were you always very artistic? Um, Yes, yes. I always wanted to be an artist ever since I was a little girl. Uh, well, it's definitely mm -hmm. inspiring and so much to see here, Riaz, for the East Side Culture, Culture Crawl. We're just giving you a little bit of a preview. It kicks off tomorrow, runs through Sunday, but just one of the many pieces that you can check out here. Yeah, so many different kinds of art being featured at the East Side Culture Crawl. And now we're here with Lincoln Heller, Five Left. How'd you get the name? Um, the simple answer is, that's my crooked little fingers. Five <laughs> fingers on my left hand, I'm left-handed, and even though I cut a lot of leather, I still have all of them. And speaking of leather, you have so many beautiful pieces. We're actually going to start to make one of these handbags. That's correct. Uh, very unique pieces. Tell us a little bit about how you get the designs. Um, what makes Five Left unique is not only the design of the, of the bag, where actually leather stitches the whole bag together, but we also take a, a raw vegetable tan leather all my leather when I buy it begins like this. It's a sort of a classic leather they use in the horse saddlery, a lot of harness things. What we're gonna do is get it wet and put some texture on it. Okay. So you literally just put it in a dunk it in a bath water. water. Yeah. Now we have an interactive show today, so <laughs> instead of me doing the texture. Okay. So we're just grabbing leather and you you've used, I think you said bicycle spokes. Pretty much anything can do the imprints, right? Yeah, from the beginning of the business, um, it's always been found objects. It's important for me to um, not just, you know, manufacture, fabricate um, textures, but what we do is a lot of random fun things. How's like this. that looking? Is this looking artistic enough mm, for us here? Yeah, come on, you need a little bit more random. A little though. more just random. Just a little sprinkle, sprinkle. Just like a sprinkle, sprinkle. There just you see go. where oh. it falls. See, I'm very purposeful. Yeah. <laughs> Interpretive dance always works well as well. And you didn't always use a machine like this. You actually used to do the imprints by hand. That's correct. We used to use um, um, rubber hammers and basically bang everything in. We'll tighten it down. Okay. okay. So you're actually imprinting it. And, and what is this machine? Is I What's the main purpose of it? Uh, I don't, we don't know. Okay. Um, a lot of people have said laundry ringer. A lot of people have said printing press. And then let's go back again. And go back again. We'll tighten it down again. All right. Oh. Um, I found it at a, at, a, at a junk store in Gibson's and despite its age. And then one more time. And then one more time. We are going to continue to finish our beautiful handbag. Once again, you can catch Lincoln's work and buy some pieces here at the Eastside Culture Crawl, which, by the way, kicks off tomorrow. It runs through Sunday, and there's the imprint right now. Eventually, Riaz, it will look something like this, Michelle. It'll look something like this. Couldn't you imagine carrying something like this to a great evening, uh, evening event? I absolutely could and would love to. I love giving a preview of the Eastside Culture Crawl. We get to sort of go into the minds of various artists, including Including David Robinson, how are you today? I'm very well, thank you. Awesome. I've definitely seen your works, and I know a lot of our viewers have. Tell us a bit about this piece right here. Uh, it's a piece I've been working on for maybe the last uh, six months or so. It was originally a commission proposal, and it was kind of an interesting thing enough for me that I kind of pursued it a little bit further and it's evolved and will just be shown the first time at the Culture Crawl. Oh wow, here. what a great chance for people to check it out. Let's go mm -hmm. through the process of how you actually create that. Yeah, well I, I've actually, uh, I had this little armature made up 
um, it's kind of laser cut steel and these things are it sort of articulates and bends into a kind of a gesture and a pose that I like so I'll start with that kind of a process uh, and from there um, I work with an oil clay uh, and this is just a fragment of it because this piece has already undergone mold making so this is a, an oil based clay that I model the figures in and um, that will take place over weeks and months, uh, kind of very detailed working at this scale. And then um, from the final clay, we actually make a, a silicon rubber mold of the works. And uh, so you, you'll see uh, the kind of reverse image of that figure. Uh, and into this mold, we pour a uh, red wax and the red wax comes out and it's kind of in a rough state to begin with. Very, this is a reject, it didn't work out and very often there's a fair bit of trial and error in getting any one mold to cooperate. This is one that's been finished and it's ready for the foundry. So parts have been cut off. These are gates into which uh, the bronze will be poured after the wax is melted away. So much great information and people yeah. can come and check out your works mm -hmm. at the East Side Culture Crawl which kicks off tomorrow and runs right in through Sunday. Thank you so much. My pleasure. And it's already busy in here. Yes, as we get ready for the East Side Culture Crawl which is such a great chance for you to check out great local artisans and really see them at work. Good morning, Kate. How are hey, you? Good. How are you? Good. Thank you. Um, we're making your specialty cutting boards but before we show the process of that, i got to find out how to... Why woodworking? <laughs> I just fell in love with it. I uh, took my first woodchuck class when I was 12 years old and never stopped. Just one woodchuck class after another. <laughs> All right, so let's show people what we've got going here and I gotta ask you, why cutting boards? Cutting boards? This was my mom's idea actually. Um, she thought it would be a great way to use up scrap lumber and have a product that I could put into some stores and just kind of get my name out there. Way to go mom, we're getting your name <laughs> out here right now. Let's assemble our cutting board. Sure. So what are you doing right now? So we've got to put some uh, glue in the boards. It's a special water, water resistant glue uh, so that we can wash them and use them in the kitchen. Uh, and what kind, and you're using which kind of wood again? This is solid black walnut. Okay. I also use maple uh, and the handles are brass. They also come in stainless steel. It's a fun, a fun little product project with lots of options. And you know, the minute and your your cutting boards are so identifiable. When I saw them, I thought, man, I think I've seen them somewhere. They're actually featured at Boulevard, which is the brand new restaurant over at Sutton Place Hotel. Yeah, that was an amazing project. It was so great to work with the team over there. They were incredible. So when you look at something like the East Side Culture Crawl, how important is it for you to be able to have new people coming in, and how exciting is it for you to see the reaction on your works? Because it's not just cutting boards. You actually have a whole collection. Yeah, I have a, a lot of furniture pieces that are featured on my website. Um, it, I think it's amazing. I think it's a great experience to have people actually come into the space and see where it all where it all kind of happens. It's neat to, to give people a little bit of perspective. This is so exciting to see you at yeah. work. Um, once again, you can check out Kate Duncan here at the East Side Culture Crawl. In fact, many different artists and artisans at several locations. For more details, you can check out their website. And that's it. Pretty, pretty much done. Yeah, thank Excellent. You. Thank you so much, Kate. Uh, Ria, so many great things to see here again. By the way, uh, opens tomorrow, and it's an extra day because it's so popular. Runs right through Sunday.